Hello everyone, and welcome to this Bloody Puddles guide with a pretty old strategy, Striker and Moab Mauler spam. It's surprisingly good still, so this'll be fun. First, we gotta place this sub right over here. You have to place it specifically so that the range border goes through this circle right over here, the circle in the wheel, so it goes through the top part of the car right over here and so that it barely touches the grass right over here on the right. This is one of the hardest placements in the entire game so if you do it, good job. And then this dart monkey is much easier than the sub but it's still not easy so let's see. The range border has to barely touch these tire treads right over here and it also has to barely touch these tire treads over here. And then you have to set it to last. 100% required. If you've gotten both of these placements right, and trust me, it is difficult, so it will definitely take you a few attempts, you should be able to beat rounds 6 and 7. Even if you beat round 6, you won't be guaranteed to beat round 7, because the sub placement could still be a little bit off. And then for round 8, Set your dart monkey to first, and then place another one right over here, as left as possible, and you want the bottom side of the range border to just barely touch the edge of this little puddle right here, and set this dart to strong. For round 9, you want to place a sub right over here, as bottom right as possible in this little notch in the puddle. If you placed it correctly, there should still be a little bit of water on the left of the sub in that notch. And if you've done it correctly, you should be able to beat round 9. Round 10 is pretty easy. All we gotta do is place a sniper just right up here, like I do right now. Just up here. Right over here. Just, just place it there. Yup. And then set it to strong. Very important. And then for round 11, just to be 100% safe, set it to first. And then mid round, you also have to place a dart monkey right over here just shove it in that corner. And then, for round 12, set your sniper back to strong. For round 14, place a sniper right over here, just in the middle, and then set him to strong. And then after the end of round 14, you have to do it after it ends, just to keep sniper shot timing consistent for 15, place a sniper right over here. And set him to strong as well. And then you're going to want to micro your top left sniper by setting it to first when you reach about 265 to 270 cash. 15 always looks very close but I've never lost to it using this micro and this setup, so yeah. And then set your sniper back to strong, and then upgrade your top right sub to longer range for 16. And then also get intel as soon as you can on 17. Some people will leave the sniper they microed on first for round 17 as well. Sometimes it can be more consistent, but it caused me to lose while recording, so I got mad and uh, kept it on strong. <laughs> Yeah, uh, anyways, for round 19, upgrade your sub to Twin Guns. And then, after round 20, which shouldn't be sketchy, I don't know why I'm slowing it down here, you want to place a Dart Monkey right over here, just slightly to the top left of this little puddle right here, and you also want the range border to touch the inside of the track right here, but that isn't entirely needed, just to the top right of that pool that small puddle, and then 
this guy should just go right between the two tracks there. If you place them correctly, the ranges should overlap almost, but not quite. And then 21 can be a little bit sketchy, so if you feel scared, micro a sniper to catch a balloon. Just set it to first, and then set it back to strong when you feel like you're safe. And then this middle sniper will s upgrade to full metal jacket on 22. 22 should be beaten with no problems. You shouldn't have to micro, but if you feel like you do have to micro one of your snipers, do that. And then for 23, place another dart monkey right over here, and set both of your middle darts to strong. This round can always look a little bit sketchy, but it's very rare that you lose to it. This doesn't usually happen. <laughs> for 24, just get camo on your sniper. Your top left sniper, that is. And then for 25, we do have to do a little bit of sub-micro. When the purples come, it will shoot two shots on the left, and then you want to switch it to close. And then be ready to micro your bottom left sniper. You shouldn't have to, though. You definitely shouldn't have to. And then set your sub to first for 26, and the rest of the run. And then get airburst in the middle of 27. Now the run gets significantly easier. The hard part is mostly over. And then for 28, you should be fine. I've never lost to this round, but it can look a bit sketchy. And then before 29, just place Striker right over here in the middle. The reason why we place him here is so that his buffs can be applied to as many bomb shooters as possible in the future. And then for 31, upgrade your camo sniper to a full metal jacket as well. And you could use a stun ability from Striker if you feel scared for whatever reason, but you should not have to. Like, you really shouldn't have to. And then, for 33, upgrade your bottom right dart monkey to camo, and get triple guns on your sub. For 35, we are now going to place a bomb shooter right over here. Here I place it and show to place it so that the range border just barely touches this rock, but you could place it a bit higher left if you wanted to. And then upgrade it to a 103 cluster bomb in the middle of 35, and use Striker's ability on a rainbow. Don't use it on just a random pink that I used it on. Yeah, get cluster quickly. It's important. You probably need it to beat the round. And then for 36, just to be safe, use a stun. And then get heavy bombs mid-round. Or, well, after the round and you need it for 37, but yeah. If you place your cluster bomb correctly, it should just barely be able to hit balloons on the left lane, and that is very important for 37, because we do need it to clean up the leads a little bit. And if you get scared for whatever reason, just use a shell, or a stun ability. 37 is why we got the camo sniper, it just makes 37 much easier. So yeah, the camo sniper is way better than the camo dart, and you cannot convince me otherwise now. You can also stun the second ceramic on 38 if you feel like it. So, yeah. 39 shouldn't be sketchy at all. Like, not at all. And you want to make sure that you're not using a stun because you 134% need that for round 40. There's no avoiding it. So, yeah. After 39, place a village, not an alchemist, just a village right over here you kind of want it so that the bottom left part of the range border just goes barely past the middle track toward the bottom there and you want to upgrade it to a 001 discount and then place a 300 alchemist next to your sub and then just use a shell on the ceramics they will promptly get destroyed and now we get 002 on the village and 
faster throwing on our alchemist. We are really trying to squeeze every little bit of cash we can, even though cash isn't really tight this run. I kind of just felt like doing that. And then, for 42, we're going to do something that does not save cash, <laughs> but makes the early game more consistent. Check where striker ra striker's range goes up to, and then place a sniper so that it is barely in the top of his range. You can place it a tiny bit higher than I place mine, and then upgrade it to a 0 2, two. We'll be getting this guy to a bouncing bullet, and when buffed by Striker's Pierce buff, is surprisingly good. And then just use a shell on 43. But yeah, as I was saying before, bouncing bullet with the Striker Pierce buff is surprisingly good now, and is honestly just a very strong mid-game tower for Bloon cleanup especially. But it can also just work on Moab insides too, which is nice or BFB insides, but you get what I mean. Anyways, you also want to place a 301 Alchemist for your Bouncing Bullet Sniper. Just right next to it, like I do here. The reason why this Alc is 301 and not 320 is because it just has better uptime, and it's a bit cheaper. I might make a video on Alchemists explaining that. And then just use a shell on 47 to be safe. The camo should be no issue. You have an elk buffed bouncing bullet and a triple gun. You'll be fine. And now also get jungle drums on your village. Very important. And now we'll be placing the tower that ends up being the most important one in the entire run. Place a village right over here, just as bottom right as possible, above Striker, and then upgrade it to a 4-2-0 primary mentoring village with camo detection. And then also use a shell when the ceramics show up on 49, just to prevent any possible RNG. You should be able to afford that 4-2-0 village after round 49. Oh yeah, and then use a shell on the first Moab on 50 just to be safe. This primary mentoring village will give us free tier 1s for now, and it'll also give us free tier 2s when we get a primary expertise, and that just saves so much money, you don't even know. Anyways, now we'll be getting our Moab damage for the primary expertise save up. Place two 130 Moab Maulers, just right over here, below your cluster bomb. You want them to be in these specific spots for now, just because it's much safer, trust me. I've played this mid-game like 15 to 20 times, and these were the most consistent placements, by far. These Maulers still don't do great Moab damage, I'm gonna be honest. So if you feel scared and feel like you have to use a shell, go for it. And then, just in this bend, right over here, just like, right in the middle of that bend, we'll get another 203 cluster bomb. The reason why we get the 230 cross path and not just skip it to get primary expertise a little earlier, we 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 just need the we need the plus 1 damage. It's very important. And then we'll get another 203 cluster bomb right over here. Make sure it is in the primary mentoring range. That is super important. It should be able to fit there in the 420 village range. And then just place another mauler right over here, 130. You want it to be in the mentoring's range again. It just has to be. And then this guy, I got a little bit scared because I almost couldn't place him, but I could. I could. I spent a while uh, going around with the placement. But you just want to place a 140 Moab Assassin right over here. 140 Moab Assassin. This guy will be our main BFB damage for the entire mid game, and the layer skipping buff actually made him surprisingly good, and that's nice to see. You'll be able to afford it after 58, or in the middle of it.
On round 60, if you want to, you can use the Moab Assassin or the Striker Stun. Doesn't really matter. 61 should get destroyed, even though it's on the outer track, and outer tracks are very scary on bloody puddles. 62 also gets destroyed. Fortified Moabs are a bit of a recurring issue in this save-up, so yeah, if you feel like you have to use an Assassin for one of them, do it. And then for 63, just use a stun for the first two waves, or if you'd like, use it for all three. I don't use it on the last wave, so I could have it up quicker on 64, but you don't really have to do that. I just recommend not using the stun on the last wave. You shouldn't need it, though. You'll be fine. You'll be fine without it. Three clusters and a bouncing bullet is super good. And then, when you see a fortified Moab on 64, use an assassin, use strikers level 10 to get the cooldown back, and then use it again. I didn't actually end up using the stun on 64, so yeah, go ahead and use it on the last wave of 63. On 65, when the left BFB is damaged a little bit, use an assassin, and then right off cooldown, use strikers level 10 and another assassin. If you don't have the assassin or the striker ability off cooldown, just stun the insides of the right BFB. And then also stun the fortified Moabs on 66, and possibly use an assassin, because even with this build, spaced fortified Moabs are scary. Like, very scary. Anyways, the rest of these mid-game rounds until 71 are boring, so let's just skip to those. Seventy-one is also pretty easy. Just use the stun when the big wave of Moab comes out. You'll be fine. The insides get promptly destroyed by our clusters and our bouncing bullet. For seventy-two, don't use anything for either BFB. We want to save all of our abilities for seventy-three because it's on the outer lanes and the outer lanes are very scary. Trust me. Use a stun on the Moabs of seventy-three. It should go on the right side, but if it goes on the left side, no problem. You should still be able to win. No issues like I did here. And then for 73, do the same thing we did on 65 with Assassin, Refresh, and another Assassin. And then for 74, if you get scared of the BFB for whatever reason, I guess you could use an Assassin again. But trust me, you don't have to. And now, at the end of 74, we'll finally have enough money to get the most important tower of the entire run. The primary expertise. This tower is the only reason why this strategy even has any chances of working on this map. So yeah. And now, get those free tier 2 upgrades on your bomb shooters. It's free, and they don't hurt. And also on 75, if you want to use an ability, if you're scared for whatever reason, go for it. <laughs> And then, on 76, just a single ballista shot should kill everything. And you also want to place a bomb shooter just as top right as possible over here. It should still be in the primary expertise's range. If it's not, you did something wrong. And you want to upgrade it straight to a 420 balloon impact. You should be able to do that in the middle of 77. Because it's the outer lanes and the outer lanes are terrifying, we still have to use abilities on 77. Do the same assassin, refresh, assassin thing that we did on 65 and 73 on 77, just to be 100% safe. You can also use a stun if you'd like. And then actually get that balloon impact. And then get another balloon impact right over here as top right as possible while still being in range of the primary expertise. It is so important that it is in the primary expertise range, and yeah, you just want to make sure it is. That's very important. And you'll be able to afford the second balloon impact in the middle of 78. Also, surprisingly, these balloon impacts are our only ceramic cleanup in like 
the entire run. I guess the Relentless Glues help out a little bit, but the impacts are really just crazy, you know? <laughs> They're that good. And now, just get rid of the obstacle. You have to get rid of it twice. The first one is 1,000, and the second one is only 500. So, yeah, 1,500 to remove the big obstacle in the middle. Very nice. And now, all we're going to do is place a few more maulers, and then get a few supports online, and then just spam a lot of maulers. The first mauler we're going to place is one right over here, just as top right as possible, and upgrade it to 230, as you will with the rest of the maulers. And then get another one over here. And then another one over here. And that's all we're going to get for now. You can also use an ability on 80 if you'd like. Shouldn't have to. I use 2, but if you don't want to, you might not have to. I'm not entirely sure, though. I didn't test it. So, uh, yeah. These early 80s should get destroyed because our defenses are too strong. And now, for 82, place a Moab glue right over here above your cluster bomb in the primary expertise range, 0, 2, 3, and set it to strong. And then just another one right over here. Just, just shove it as top right as possible next to your third mauler on the right. And then get both of these guys to relentless glues. These guys also help a little bit with ceram cleanup, but I'm not entirely sure they're needed for that purpose. They are needed for the Moab insides, though. The insides of BFBs, as we don't have that much pierce to be able to handle them, even with striker-buffed Moab maulers. It's still not enough a lot of the time. So we're just getting these relentless glues to be safe. And now, <laughs> spam 20 total maulers. You have 7 right now, 10 on each side, go. I'm not going to talk during this part but I am going to be placing a lot of maulers. 20 in total. Try and balance it out so there's 10 on each side, about. And they should all be in the primary expertise's range. 2, 3, 0, and set to first. So, yeah, have fun with that. You should be done placing them at the end of 89, or at the end of 90. I don't really remember.
So after 89, you should have all of your Maulers, and Striker will now reach level 20 on 91. And now, just upgrade eight of them total, including the one we got for the mid game, to assassins. Just get eight assassins. You can probably get away with more, but you, uh, you, you don't have to. Eight is the only required amount. And then for 93, use Striker's level 20 ability when the DDT show up. If you don't use it, you definitely lose, but if you do use it, the DDTs will get, like, two shot. It's kind of crazy. Ninety-four will get absolutely wrecked by our setup, but if you want to use a stun or some assassins, feel free to do that. Ninety-five also gets wrecked by this setup, which is kind of surprising, considering the DDTs are black balloons and bomb shooters normally can't pop black balloons, but Striker makes them able to. It's kind of weird, but it works. Not even a sabotage needed, which is kind of crazy. You should be able to afford your 8th assassin in the middle of 96, and now you can stop getting assassins here if you'd like. Watch them absolutely destroy the ZOMGs on 96. And then for 97, spam all of your assassins immediately at the start of the round, and once the left fortified ZOMG pops into BFBs, start using a stun on the right side. I start using it a little bit late here, and it ends up getting a bit scarier than I'd like. So, yeah. You also want to try and stun the Moab insides if possible, because they're scary. They're very scary. Especially if you don't have a primary expertise missile going at them. And then on 98, wait a few seconds, spam all 8 assassins, and now just spam stun until the end of the round. Just spam it as much as you can until the end of the round. You might also want to place this ninja before the round starts, and get him to a sabotage. This guy will just make 99 a bit easier. If you don't want to buy this sabo and you want to buy more assassins instead, feel free to do that, but you will have to use a few stuns on 99. Or just one. But if you did buy the sabo, use it on 99 and you should be safe. For 100, all 8 assassins, Refresh, all eight again. The bad layer is already almost gone, and just gets destroyed by our maulers. Crazy strategy. And if you've done everything correctly, and trust me, it is a lot, this is the hardest map in the game, non-custom maps, you should now have your Bloody Puddles Black Border, with a really cool, somewhat throwback strategy. I hope this guide helped you out in some way, have a nice rest of your day, and goodbye. I'm also in the process of making a video on why Spectre sucks, and it might be my 3k special just because I don't like that tower that much. Anyways, actually, bye now. Ah. Uh